Hi, everybody. I'm going to turn now to part two of agriculture and the agricultural revolution or the Neolithic revolution, and I want to carry this forward into the development of civilization. A quick word about these PowerPoint slides. You really um, cannot simply use these to study. These are not your notes. You need to make your own notes. Uh, hopefully these are helpful to you, but you're going to want to mark these things up as well. Okay. So civilization is defined as a complex society that practices agriculture, that has a certain degree of inequality in it. In other words, different people doing different things, usually some people wealthier than others. It begins to develop laws. It begins to develop means of controlling uh, itself or social control. And civilization happens with agriculture, and it takes another leap forward with irrigated agriculture, or agriculture that is artificially uh, made possible by flood control or taking water from a river and running it through fields uh, by digging ditches and so forth. Why? Because in order to do that, you need to get people organized. You need to get people together working toward a, a specific goal. Alongside of this is uh, the development of an agricultural surplus and a definition of rules of behavior. And to keep uh, track of these things, we get the uh, technology known as writing, and I'll talk about that in just a minute. This happens at different times in history. Uh, it happens first in Mesopotamia, and that's what we'll talk about, but it's important to understand that it happens independently in India, in the Indus River, along the Indus River, the Indus River Valley. It happens as well along the Yellow River in China. Okay? It's interesting to note that the Egyptians along the Nile River uh, do develop a civilization, and yet it doesn't move forward the way um, Mesopotamian civilization does. And I'd argue it's partly because they don't really need to irrigate. The Nile River takes care of itself. It floods annually, seasonally, and uh, creates uh, very fertile farmland. But in Mesopotamia, by contrast, along the Tigris and Euphrates river valleys, we uh, get a civilization that really needs to irrigate through a, a system of, of ditches and, and hydraulic technology. Okay? And the uh, Mesopotamians um, are famous especially for something called Hammurabi's Code. Why? Because this is the first written law that we have. It goes back about 5,000 years. It defined relations, uh, defined different classes of people and defined relations among them. It, in essence, creates a state. And what you see here, if you look to your right, is this image of our friend Hammurabi on the left receiving the law from a god. Here's the god seated on the throne. Notice how much larger that god is than, than Hammurabi himself. That law is written down on this stela or stone uh, tablet, this tower. Uh, right here, and it's written in cuneiform. Uh, you can you can find loads of images of this and look at, at the script. Um, but those laws define relationships, and in particular define relationships in terms of uh, irrigation and in terms of your rights and responsibilities uh, to to your um, to your fellows. Okay. All right. So by the time you're done with this whole um, unit, you should be able to define a few terms, terms like state, define classes of people, define civilization. You should be able to describe the Neolithic Revolution. You should be able to locate key places on a map. You can use Riley for references here, and I'll talk more about maps in a bit. And you should be able to outline the arguments about the Neolithic Revolution, how it happened and ultimately uh, what its impact is, what it means to us, and how it relates to the development of civilization. That's all for now. Bye-bye.